How do you guys feel about Force of Will? For me, Force of Will is like the gold standard of counter spells. Right. It is. The, I think it's like the best counter spell in CDH. It's you guys are nuts. No, I don't run five mana counters. <laughs> Begin. <laughs> Well, this is the Play to Win podcast. I'm Cam. I'm Dylan. I'm Tyler. And this week, uh, Tyler's back again. Oh, shit. Hello, oh, Tyler. How did yes. I find my way here? <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have you back. It's good to have you here. Well, thank you. So um, today, we're going to talk about counter spells. I love counter spells. I, I love counter spells. I love counter spells in CDH. I love, I love I love them more. I don't think that you do. I don't <laughs> think so. I don't leave home without counter spells in CEDH in some sort of form or fashion. Um, so we're going to talk about every single counter spell that will pretty pretty much every single counter spell that sees play in CEDH. Some of them are exactly what you would suspect from a counter spell. Some of them. Maybe not so much. Don't say counterspell on them, but, but they're basically are counterspells, counter spells. and uh, we'll, we can explain why if that comes up. If but you want to. Yeah. So um, overall, there, there's 31 of them. 31 of them. That's a lot. 31 of counter playable spells. counterspells in CDH, according to Cameron. Yeah. Well, well, I I will say there's a range in power level that we're going to go over today, because um, I do think it's really good that we also kind of figure out what our what our floor is. Yeah. Right. Not only our floor, but our basement. What makes a, a counterspell play? Yeah. in CEDH. Yeah. What do you think, Tyler? Because I feel like maybe you have like some sort of system or something. <laughs> I do. So I think um, the very obvious one is mana cost, right? We are in a hyper-efficient format when we're talking about CEDH. And so there are a lot of counter spells that, while they might see play in casual, are just not mana efficient enough to be played in CEDH. Mm -hmm. And generally, um, the, the most that you're going to pay for a counter spell in CEDH is two. And that's and, a lot. And that's really only mana drain and sometimes delay. And there's a couple other like maybes but that's pretty much as high as it gets and the premium stuff is all the free counter magic that that even though it has downsides of some kind or another you're almost always gonna run as much free counter magic as you can because being able to tap out and still interact is really important yeah one of the best ways to win games of magic i think is double spelling and specifically being able to cast a threat of your own and being able to either a protect it or b still interact with the table in a meaningful way in the same turn Having turns like that is how you win games, which is why cards like Force of Will, I think, are like the gold standard of like counter spells. Being able to tap out for your Timno or being able to tap out for your Ristic Study, back it up with the Force of Will, and then still hold up that Force of Will to defend your Ristic Study or stop the table from someone else from winning or something like that. Super powerful. Yeah. Well, part of the other reason why Force of Will is the gold standard is because it, it can counter anything. Like, we'll also notice as we go through our list that there's a lot of spells that can only counter a certain type of spell or could not counter the spell if the opponent has some sort of response that's printed on the card. Yep, so flexibility is maybe how we want to term that is wow, really, that, really important. A, it's that's almost a like, much better way than It's almost I like it. someone, <laughs> someone has thought of that before. Yeah. <laughs> so flexibility is really important, and I think in our discussion we'll probably lump in spells that say counter unless your opponent pays some amount of mana. This is, a, in a sense, also flexibility because it's saying counter target spell if your opponent does not have this much mana available. Yeah. yeah. Situational counters is what these will really become. The reason why counter spells are good is because they're good in a plethora of situations. So once the situations start dwindling, that's what makes the counter spell worse and worse. Another reason why Force of Will is so good, it counters anything. It counters creatures, and when as we'll notice as we go through these counter spells, not a lot of these counter spells actually counter creature spells. So Force of Will being able to do that for free is really crucial. But the other thing that I wanna I wanna get out there too is that this is they're all part of a package. This is all part of your ten to twelve to fifteen to twenty, you know, counter spell package that you have in your deck, 20? right? <laughs> I don't know. Like, there are there's, some mono blue decks. There's 31 play cards. Maybe right? Baral, like, Chief of Compliance, and nothing else. <laughs> like, right. What's so, the average amount of counter spells you think it's easy to play in a deck? There's probably uh, a way to find this out, but... So I look to play anywhere between like 10 and maybe 15 pieces of on the stack interaction. I think I'm around the same. That's, yeah, that's about right. Maybe yeah. upwards of 20, but... I think in Ken and I run a little more than that, maybe interaction all told. So, all right, so Force of Will. Gold standard because it's free. And the flexibility. And the flexibility. It hits every single card type. Right. No questions asked. Yeah. You do need a blue card in hand, so it's not like it's, it's 
without strings completely, but in most decks where you cast Force of Will, having a blue card in hand is not that big of an ask. Yeah, that's another, I mean, one of our categories is like disadvantages, like things that are, things that you have to cost that you have to pay for the card a lot of times, right? Yep, absolutely. All right, so I think we're just going to talk about all of the blue ones first. Yeah. Because they're they're blue. Most of them are blue, and these are actually counter spells. It's a blue mechanic, yeah. yeah. It's a blue mechanic. Which is, on. if we're going to take a second away, if we can take a quick divergent path. yeah. It's bullshit. I think counterspell should be in all colors. I think counterspell should be different throughout all colors, but having only blue being the counterspell color, I think that's a mistake. You know, I, I think they're sort of addressing that, and they're finding ways to print interaction in other colors that feels as meaningful as counterspells, like deflecting SWAT. I would say sort of Teferi's protection and silence and those sort of effects are in the same boat for white. Like, they, they're getting there. But. Yeah. Yeah, good point. Like, you're not going to see silence in Grand Arbiter. That's not the name of the card. Grand Abolisher? That's the name of the card. You're not going to see those effects on this list because they're not effectively countering something. Stopping something on the stack from happening is a counter is yeah. basically what we're going to find. And it's, I think, one of the reasons why, in my opinion, it, it, you have to be, you really have to be playing blue in CDH to be able to win tournaments. And now there's obviously decks that d go to just want a tournament when Nota wins very tournaments. There are decks that can do it, but blue is just so powerful because counter spells are singularly in blue. And I think that's kind of a bummer. That's, that's, that's my side divergent path. You know, your side divergent path actually just upped our count to 32 cards. Did you just remember to vault trickery? I did. <laughs> Can you still forget Don't Imp's Mischief? It. Oh, yeah, Imp's Mischief. Put that on there, oh, too. Oh, shit. 33. <laughs> Actually, that's the perfect number of spells. 33. <laughs> 33, because you, if you double it, it's how many you have in your 99, right? If you triple it, fuck. I wow. was going to say, I don't Plato think so. Plato really good at math. <laughs> there we go. Uh, do you like how I lumped you guys in with that math thing? Yeah, so we're, we're all, all really bad at math. Yeah, we're all, yeah. yeah oh, we're, oh. we're all trying to find the guy who <laughs> did, did this. this. Yeah. <laughs> So Force of Will is the best. What's the worst counterspell in CDH? Probably Rewind. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I love Rewind, though. That's a great card. I That's mean, it's pretty free, funny. but it's not free at the same time. Yeah, very few decks that can play Rewind. Yeah. I think there are two that are often very close to making the cut for a CDH deck, but don't. Um, and Mana Leak is definitely one of them. Um, like Delay, which is a two-mana counterspell that is is good because it hits anything the same way Force of Will does, and it costs one generic and one blue rather than double blue. So in, sometimes Delay will make the cut. But for the same price, uh, Mana Leak is counter-target non-creature spell unless its controller pays three. Counter-target counter spell? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 Fuck. <laughs> so instead, Mana Leak is counter-target spell unless its controller pays three. And the problem is... Sometimes they can pay three, and when you're paying two for it, that just doesn't feel great. Two is a lot to not be sure you can counter something when you need to. Yeah, Mana Leak is like a modern all-star, but it's always just a little bit worse than other options, and that's also true here in CDH. I think if for two mana counter spells, you're really only looking at like something like a Mana Drain or a... Delay. Delay. Um, yeah, delay being a, a, a blue and a colorless, being and not double blue, makes it really valuable over the mana drain. But mana drain's effect of giving you that extra mana is super powerful. And I just, I don't think you want a third of that spell, like a third hard counter two mana spell. You don't really want that. Yeah. So mana leak often doesn't make the cut. And I just can't find an argument that puts mana leak above either mana drain or uh, delay. Yeah. Well, right? honestly, while we're at it, then you know, counter spell is also a card that's on this list. And really, if, if we're not going to put a second two-mana one in, yeah. Counterspell is also going to be off of the, the list then, too, right? That's not going to be one of the premier ones that we're go looking for. And there's just such a big difference between double blue and one generic one blue. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's kind of strange that we're at that point where two-mana is just almost too expensive. Like, I really, I don't want to play more than one of that effect. And if that, normally I don't even want to play one two-mana counterspell. I would argue that really we should be on one and zero-mana counterspells at this point. Yeah, as much as we can, which well, is weird. Um, all right, let's. I'm, we're going to start going in alphabetical order here. Talk about some of these guys. Um, an offer you can't refuse. This one's great. This one's new. This one is like Swan Song, but I, th I think it might be better. Honestly, I think it might be better than Swan Song, too. It's awfully close. Um, and I think this was my pick for the best card from that set when we talked about Nuka Pena. Probably. Yeah. Nice, nice feather in your cap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, the, the upside for your opponent is reasonably significant of making two treasures. That yeah. certainly is not nothing. Um, but because it hits all non-creature spells, meaning it is pretty flexible um, and it costs only one mana, 
that is still pretty good. It is a risk you're willing to take. It does things that I like being it counters counter spells really well. It does what Dispel does. It does that exact same thing. One mana to counter a counter spell. That's really great because that's going to help me protect my stuff. Yeah. But it also stops a lot of win conditions. One mana stop a lot of win conditions is really good. So being that offensive and defensive, it's good at stopping your opponent. It's good at protecting your things. I think that brings out the power. But the treasures thing sucks. Well, the that. treasure thing, like you can, you can work around that weak by giving yourself two treasures if you need to as well like sure. making your mox diamond when you don't have a land in hand into two treasures is a lot better than just having a dead mox diamond sometimes it might be good if you go for a win and someone has a counter spell where you thought that they didn't rather than using your um an offer you can't refuse to protect your thing maybe you just counter your thing and get the two treasures because you have a yogsmoth will in your hand and you can just replay your win condition later something like that like it is versatile even though it's the, the downside is real whereas like swan song that two two is not you can't really do anything with that so it's not as versatile on your own shit no and the giving someone a two two goes against uh like gaia's cradle if they're playing any kind of evolution style deck it also hurts you in that function too so yeah, I could definitely see uh, an offer you can't refuse being higher than Swan Song at this point. Yeah. Since you mentioned um, offensive versus defensive, I would say this is a spell that is slightly better defensively, meaning when you're protecting your own win specifically. And the reason is that your opponent still may be able to use those two treasures with some other instant speed interaction that they have if your offer you can't refuse resolves and counters their counter or whatever it is. But there's a lot lower chance that they're going to be able to use those treasures if you have successfully defended a game-winning combo and then those treasures just aren't going to matter. Yeah. Or if it's like the last counter spell that you use in the counter spell war then, yeah. and then they're just dead, right? They have no cards in hand, but these two treasures aren't going to do anything. I would argue that this is the counter spell that you want to start counter wars with, though. Unless I you have Pactum yes yeah. i think this is the one that you want to put out first because you want them to counter this spell if you know they have backup all right counter my and offer you can't refuse first because this way you can't get the treasures and then i can counter with something you know maybe my spell spears my spell pierce will get turned on because you have to pay mana for your counter spell. Well, that's a good point too yeah yeah, things like um, Spell Pierce and Miscast, which are cards we'll talk about, those get better towards the end of the counter war. You want to do those last. You want to cast those counter spells at the end so that everyone can tap their mana a little bit lower, but cards like an offer you can't refuse, and even Swan Song for the same reason. You want to, I think you want to start the counter wars with those so that hopefully the, the bait is is bitten and, and people counter those spells so they don't get yeah. the, be the and benefit. And most of all, Pact of Negation, because you just that's don't want to pay five. Yeah, that's a great one to start a counter war with, too. One, because it's free, obviously, and also because yeah. if they counter it, yeah, like you said, they, you don't have to pay five, which is great. Yeah, exactly. So I love that. I love that. You know, Days is another one of these situational counter spells, too. Free counter spells. This is this is the best. This is it where is I want free, as many yeah. counter spells as possible. How do we feel about that that free cost, though? Like, returning an island to your hand. I think the cost is fine. I think the force spike of it is a little bit fear, fearsome in our format as opposed to Legacy. Like, having one extra mana, that's going to happen a lot. Yeah, I, I personally don't run Days because even though it can be effectively free, and sometimes you want to return the island because in CDH, you might reasonably not be making land drops by the time you're casting a daze and so you're now going to make your land drop mm -hmm. but um <laughs> yeah that's true but, that's yeah. true yeah um but the the whole all it takes is for them to pay one just doesn't cut it it cuts it on something like fluster storm that has storm but um i for me days does still does not make it if you're if you want to go as fast as possible i think days is better if you're playing rock silas i think days oh, yeah. is defensible if you want to add nauseam as quickly as possible i think days is definitely an option but if you're trying to do anything in the mid range i don't think days is good no where it gets people is when they tap out for their commander and they have force of will in hand and they think that they're safe because they can stop the ad knows player from doing their thing and then they get surprised by it because they have no more mana they can't pay this one here so i i, I think it is really good in like it, it's situational it's a situational counter spell and i think at least in my book you only have certain slots for these situational counter spells that aren't always going to be useful when you might need them to be i i put things like um like spell pierced and miscast in the same category exactly you know what mana league is another one we already talked about that i also put in there you can't always use it someone might fit the situation that you're in what do you think is better spell pierce out. or miscast this is a question that I have for you both, and I want the answer. Spell Pierce. Spell right? Pierce is better. What do you I think? like Miscast better. You like Miscast better. What's your reason, Cameron? You go first. I like the versatility that it can counter anything that I need it to counter. What about specifically? Like, what can Miscast? What can Spell Pierce counter that you like that Miscast can't counter? Uh, rule of Law specifically. Spell Pierce can also counter. 
Um, for me, it's Underworld Breach. Spell Pierce can counter yeah, Underworld Breach. Is helpful. Underworld Breach is a really big one. You think the three mana is big enough difference? Uh, yeah, I think I think someone having two extra mana available happens much, much more often than having three extra mana available. And so that's just sort of where I draw the line. I do not. I, I don't play anything that says counter unless they pay two. Interesting. Okay. I put Spell Pierce and Miscast around the same level of power. I think I personally just like Spell Pierce because of my attachments to the card because I just like Spell Pierce and it's been around longer and I played a lot longer. I think it's I, I really do think it's even like I hate to like not choose well, a side on this question that I asked but I think they're even the the problem is is that it, it is all a personal decision as to which one is better because it's really determined based on what you're scared of more I would think what too, is your right? deck yeah. are you scared of people having more open mana are you scared of ad nauseum specifically or like are you more scared of underworld breach are you scared of someone having a basalt monolith combo at the table yep right. that's why you don't want people to play spell pierce because they, <laughs> they, they, but miscast can't counter basalt it's monolith better against Kinnon. That's, yeah. that's the long ploy I see it I see it now so delay is another one that we talked about this yeah. one is uncount no, it is counterable. It's pretty counterable. It it's can very counterable. It I meant to say it's unconditional, unconditional in yeah. what it counters. And the, the three suspend counters that go on this, whatever you counter, it's virtually for the rest of the game, this thing's away. Yeah, more often than not, by the time that you can cast delay, three turns after that, the game should be wrapped up. And a lot of the times, the things that you're countering, like this is a great one in a counter war also, especially near the end of a counter war or something, because if it counters the counter spell, when the delay goes off, they're going to counter counter spell. It's not going to do anything. So if you can make that target for the delay, not do anything when it comes off, that's even better. Yep, absolutely. Mana Drain is probably the only two mana counter that almost always sees play in decks that have enough blue, but if if there's a runner-up, it's probably Delay. Yeah, and I think some might argue that Delay is like more playable than Mana Drain. I don't know if their argument would be any good, but that one blue, one generic versus double blue is like a real upside that I think you may not think like it may just seem obvious obviously mana drain is better both two mana and uncon you know both two mana unconditional spells mana drain gives you a ton of mana but i really do think sometimes delay is like a better option yeah. well mana drain is also a tell like having two blue up <laughs> is a tell <laughs> yeah that's also that's a much more seeable i think yeah definitely and, and the four color piles i think delay like being able to be cast off of like you know a blue and a non blue source it's it's worth a lot what what really sets this card back is it just being two mana yeah. What would this have to be to be a one mana spell? Would it have to be suspend one or is it suspend two? One mana counter a spell straight up would be really, really good. But at suspend one, I think it would be bad. At suspend two, I think it'd be super playable. I think it would. I, I think that makes sense. I think at suspend one, it would still see play. Yeah, um, probably, because probably the amount of times play. it's so good in a counter war then, because counter spells are just never going to get cast off of suspend. They're no longer useful. And a lot of times, you know, if someone's setting up for an underworld breach turn, like, it might still be good for them to cast Underworld Breach in their next upkeep, but not necessarily. Yes, that's true. It, having it counter the Tainted Pact in response to the Thassa's Oracle trigger is also funny, too. Right, yeah. Or even countering the Thassa's Oracle, because then they just get that in their upkeep. I guess they would still have the Tainted Pact, because maybe they wouldn't fire they it They could off also then, still have the other combo piece, Not as good. Right, you I know guess, what it but... is good with, though, is Dranith Magistrate. Oh, that's oh, yeah. also that's kind true. That's kind of fun, right? So then they can't cast it from exile. Um, Dispel. Now, Dispel's a one-minute counter. I love Dispel. Counter. This one, I think, is one of my pet cards for some reason. I don't know why. Just one mana counter an instant is everything that I wanted. It's a miscast, except it's live well into the late game. So I really appreciate it in mid range decks like Thrasios decks and things like that. Um, and it also stops early ad nauseums, which is super important in the format. Yeah. To me, it's protection. Yeah. It stops everything that's going to target me because for the most part, that's instants. Great in a counter war. Yes. Great one in mana counter counters war. A spell. Yep. It let, helps let my stuff resolve. And it protects me from your ad nauseum, too. Right, so yeah. it's protection. It is a little narrow, though. So like other spells we've discussed, if if it doesn't hit stuff that your deck is afraid of in particular, you're probably not running it. I think I play this over Spell Pierce and Miscast. So this is one of, between this Spell Pierce and Miscast, like these three cards uh, all kind of fight with each other in terms of where they want to go. Because a lot of times you only have room for two of them. So you kind of have to have this little internal argument with yourself and go, well, what am I going to see? You know, to be honest, I kind of, yeah, I put these three together and I also put like Swan Song and an offer you can't refuse in the same category just because they're one mana counter spells that are all really good in a counter war and are also really good at countering 
your opponent's um, win conditions and stuff like that. I do put obviously Swan Song in an offer you can't refuse higher than these. I think okay, there is a little yeah. like a little half step between them. Because for a second I thought you were gonna be like on power level, no. But I still I think they they take up the same role. Like all of these cards are Swan Songs in my yeah. opinion. They're one mana counter war spells that also help counter your opponent's stuff. They're the same category, um, and I think in my opinion it goes in offer you can't refuse Swan Song. Dispel, miscast, spell pierce. Oh no, spell pierce then miscast. Okay. But those five in that order for me. Yep, I think I think I'm pretty close to that too. Yeah, yeah. I, I value miscast a little higher, but I, th again, those well, three are so close. Well, to hold up, we're gonna jump ahead a little bit. Flusterstorm is better Ooh, than than okay. spell pierce. Sorry, yes. Miscast. I'm sorry. It's a six. It's a six it's category. A, there's a six of them too, right? But I, it's wait, normally you're not you... forgetting Abjur, surely. <laughs> I don't even know what that reference is. I don't no, know what right? Abjur. So like, there's it's just, a one blue mana counter like, spell. Is it that yeah. says counter uh, as an additional cost sacrifice a blue permanent? Oh, okay. In um Edric, that that Edric plays that counter spell. I think sometimes does maybe, it? Maybe you have maybe, to sacrifice a not. blue permanent. Maybe that's not good. Maybe they don't. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I'm not sure they do. I I. I to play this in Talrand, which is probably the only deck that it is oh, good. That is, it's actually really good in Talrand, I, I would imagine. I might yeah. put Force Spike above that card, though, <laughs> yeah. honestly. Anyway, I'm sorry. Flusterstorm. Let's yeah, talk so about Flusterstorm. It's a six card category with Flusterstorm. Yeah. Is Flusterstorm better than Dispel? I think Flusterstorm is better than Dispel. Yeah. Because everything that you want to get with Dispel, Flusterstorm can also hit, and a lot of the times it can end up being more devastating. Yeah, I think I think it is much better than Dispel, and I think there's a case for it being better than Swan Song. Mm -hmm. It really depends on the situation, but in counter wars or turns with a lot of stuff on the stack or a lot of spells cast earlier in the turn, this this can do double duty. Oh, you know, yeah. This is most yeah. likely going to counter one thing, but it might counter multiple things. And from the way it's set up, it's basically uncounterable. And it's basically uncounterable because they're going to have to pay a whole ton of things. They can't, you know, they, one counter spell is not going to save them. There's a billion for you know on the stack. Um, but I think also this is Flusterstorm is so unique and powerful because it stops the unstoppable. It like stops storm stuff a lot of the time. With one exception. With one what's notable that? exception. What's that? Flusterstorm is very bad if your opponent responds with Flusterstorm. That is <laughs> then true. you then yeah. you are yeah. in a little bit of trouble. It specifically which, loses to itself. In but. which case that also makes Flusterstorm even more powerful because it's it the stops only Flusterstorm, thing, right? <laughs> it stops, it's it's like, the only thing that stops it's Flusterstorm. It's like the 2012 <laughs> legend rule where like you would have to play Geist of Saint Trap is the only answer to Geist of Saint yeah. Trap. Almost, except that Mindbreak Trap also stops Flusterstorm. Ooh, exile any number of spells. Oh, Mindbreak Trail. Mindbreak Trap is one that we can talk about that we'll get to at some point, but that one that's yeah. one that I've been loving recently. Oh, no, that card is exceptional, I think, now. Specifically because it is it is a hard counter. It's it's like a Force of Will. It, it can counter any spell. It can counter creatures, and it exiles them off of the stack. And yet it doesn't say counter on it. Yeah, it doesn't say counter. It's actually not a counter spell, but I feel yeah. like it is, right? It, it is. It is a counter spell. It is a counter spell. Right, but it matters because of Autumn's Veil and Veil of Summer, right? That's true. Yeah, it it it, stop, it can counter um, Abrupt Decay, even more flexibility. Right. Mindbreak Trap is fucking awesome. Oh man, it does have the like the flexibility, it, but it, the situation is sometimes tough to come up to. That's true. That's true. It's not you're not always going to be in situations where your opponent casts three spells, but when you are in counter wars, Mindbreak Trap is like the, the king of counter wars. I feel like it's amazing. It's in probably those the situations. best the yeah. best counter spell that you'd want in a counter war. It counters everything that you needed to counter. You can basically manipulate the stack any way you want to if it's been a big counter war. Yeah. So you're not going to see it in your ad nauseum decks, even though that's you might. I've been seeing it a little bit more recently. I think really. I, th I think Mindbreak Trap just because it's free. That the ability to cast a free counter spell is so fucking powerful. I think stretching for things like Mindbreak Trap and Days are like more and more serviceable in the ad nauseum decks. I think Days makes sense. I wish with Mindbreak Trap though you could trigger it off yourself. Like if you cast it, if it's your fourth spell, then you can yeah. cast it. Then that would be cool. But I think if you really want to take advantage of the benefit of ad nauseum uh, to its max potential. The reason why drawing 30 cards at once is so powerful is because you have interaction. You can protect your win after that. It's not just that it gives you the resources to present a win. Yeah. It gives you resources to present a protected win if you have enough counter spells. And having a ton of free counter spells yeah. is how you do that, is how you present that protected win. Yeah, well, there are some of these other ones that are also free that are just only free because you have to meet a certain other condition, but their mana cost is absurdly high. Yeah misdirection is another one of these but like you don't see these in these ad nauseum decks because you do get to a part where uh, a point where well now my ad nauseum is not drawing me 30 cards yes, my ad nauseum that's true. drew me 10 cards <laughs> because like peer into the abyss was also one of these cards that i drew 
Right. And like, it, it, yes, your solution is pivot into an end step ad nauseum deck so that you know you can get a little bit more flexibility. But then you lose the speed. But you're losing out on and, your which speed, which is the right? reason why ad nauseum is good. Yeah. So I, I I feel like a lot of those cards then really fight with each other for uh for their spaces. Yeah. That's definitely true. Yeah. I think force of will, misdirection, mind break trap, fierce guardianship, fierce guardianship, and even force of negation are the ones that actually cost like three plus mana, so they really do hurt your ad nauseum turns. But them being free is sometimes worth the payoff. So I kind of put them in, in a similar category. Yeah, alphabetically, um, Fierce Guardianship is kind of up next with where we're at here. So yeah, so I let's hit the other two free ones, ones here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Fierce Guardianship and um, Force of Negation was the other one that you said that we said that we haven't talked about yeah. yet. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, these are both also very nice. Both kind of situational because it either needs to be – or for them to be free it's kind of situational yeah it, you either have to have your commander out which you kind of want anyway so you're incentivized especially with cheap commanders and then with the force of negation it having to be your opponent's turn is 75 percent of the game yeah that's a lot <laughs> right so <laughs> so most of the time you know you're actually going to be able to you know pay its alternate cost i think it's pretty easy to say that in most commander decks that actually play their commander rather than commander is just the outlet in the command zone fierce guardianship is much better than force of negation oh i would definitely agree too yeah, yeah i definitely think so yeah because the the downside of only being able to cast force of negation on for free on your opponent's turn is massively wild the it really makes it so like control decks are really the only decks that can really totally capitalize off of it and then the more aggressive like ad nauseum strategies will start to totally shy away from this because of the higher mana cost and not being able to cast it for free as they're winning it gives you the ability to be really rewarded for playing commander focused strategies because being able to play your commander in order to turn on your interaction as early as possible, it, it makes these cards so much more powerful because it, it gets you to do what your deck wants to do anyway, which is like to double spell, to be able to get your commit out early, to be able to protect things early, to be able to stop your opponents from winning early. Um, and all the reasons why free spells are good. We don't. I don't have yeah. to talk about them every single time. <laughs> all right, well, while we're talking about these free spells, you know, Mental Misstep is also a free counter spell too. This is true. Mental Misstep, um, as, as we discussed when we were talking about the new one, um, Ooh, help I, it's so bad I didn't even bother to remember its Mental, name. Uh, it's it's mispl. I don't know. I don't know. Mystic, mystic, men, mystic, misstep. Um, uh, it's a, it, it is a misstep. It's a misstep. It's uh, it's, but it's like a small misstep, a minor misstep. Minor misstep. That's minor what it's misstep. called. Yeah, That's what I it think is. that is. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Hey, we got there. So the problem with a minor misstep is that it costs one. And um, in, in similar fashion, mental misstep is extremely narrow in that it's only hitting something with a cost of one, but it is free. And part of the reason it occupies such a good slot is that very frequently your opponents who are going before you may be able to get off the ground in a way that you're not going to be able to handle if they have a turn one Mystic Remora in particular, or sometimes a Soul Ring or, or other early one drops that you really don't want to see come down. And being able to catch this before you have played your first land is really relevant. So for the low, low cost of free... Uh, I think you end up running it in most blue decks. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. No, what are you gonna say? A lot of the other targets that you'll see mental misstep hit are the one mana top deck tutors too. Very popular targets for that. What were you going to say? I was going to say you spend so much time on the draw in CDH. 75% of the time you're not going first and somebody else has a mana advantage over you throughout the game, which is like an even extra reason why something like this and the free spells are so powerful is because being able to kind of skip ahead on that time and get ahead of them in a way where you weren't able to have before is, is really good, which is why mental misstep is really good and why minor misstep probably is a big fart noise because... That it's at that one mana spot. It's competing, competing with things like an offer you can't refuse, Swan Song, Dispel. Yeah, and I think all those that we listed earlier are far better than that one. Which makes Mental Misstep even that much better in a command. I keep trying to call them commanders instead of counter spells. <laughs> it makes Mental Misstep even that much better in a counter war then too, because a lot of the one mana cards that we mentioned here, well, they all can be countered by Mental Misstep. So um, it just adds to the list of these, you know, amazing hits that you can get with that card and if you have never been in the position where someone starts going off on a line that involves culling the weak and they get there and then you get to say i have a mental misstep it feels great yes oh, that yeah. is very true crop rotation is another one any of these one minute yeah. spells where they have to sacrifice something i just did that to you the other day mental oh it was, your crop rotation. it was great yeah it was fantastic it was really yeah good. so where would we mid mid video list here how do we feel about like the the 
free counters because we have Force of Will at the top. What's the second one then? Fierce Guardianship. I, I think Fierce Guardianship. I yeah. also have Fierce Guardianship there. What's the third one? I think the third one is one of the one mana spells. I think well, one we're of, just talking about the free. Oh, ones. just the free ones. Just the free okay, ones. Okay, so yeah. just free ones. Probably Force of Negation is next. Oh, yeah, is a Force of Negation and Mind Break Trap. I guess is the real question. I think Force of Negation is I next. Think and I then, think Force of Negation, and, but too. it's close. It is super. It, it's very meta dependent yeah. too. I think that it being on seventy five percent of the time is better than whatever mind break traps is i don't think mind break tra- i don't think mind break trap is hitting 75 percent yeah. but it does it very d- powerful it depends on the things. deck too the faster the deck the better mind break trap might be the slower the deck the better force of negation might be well that's the other thing too we didn't really talk about this there's a lot of creatures and enchantments that also say you can't do anything with mind break trap because everyone's playing one spell a turn now rule of law is very popular right now which right. really turns mind break trap into a stinker basically any stacks yeah that are preventing people from doing what they want to do can really make that card bad but in a turbo meta if you're playing in a bunch of everyone's playing ad nauseum mind break trap i think is a lot better although force of negation still counters ad nauseum so so we'll say force of negation above what would be mind, mind break, break trap? trap. I think and so. is, is, where's pactive negation? See, oh, I have, shit. I yeah. have pactive uh, negation above, above force of negation. Force, uh, it's have, above force of negation? For me, yes. Yeah, I think it's above fierce guardianship. I think pact is second. I think force of will is first and then pactive negation. And then pact. It really negation. depends on your commander, but I value fierce guardianship more personally. I guess that's true. And well, the reason Mr. is, if you, yeah, here, I guess, right. you know what? Yeah, but pactive negation can counter creatures. That's important. It is, it is really important, but. Ideally, you're only using Pact of Negation defensively, yeah. whereas I feel like you have a lot yeah. more flexibility with Fierce Guardianship That's where you're not getting true. so punished for using it. Because, like, the creatures that you want to hit, like Grand Abolisher. Right. Yeah, you can Pact hit Grand Abolisher, shit. but now you're, you basically time walked yourself then. Yeah, that's true. I think of it like um, if I'm demonic consultationing for a counter spell and I need, like, the most. You know the the most best specific counter spell, I feel like I'm going for Pact more often than I'm going for Fierce Guardianship, but. Fierce Guardianship, the tempo play is so much better. I agree with you because I, there's no downside. Yeah, That's so I also, huge. I also do like Fierce... I also do like Pactive Negation when you are like Praetor's Grasping or Opposition Agenting your opponent. I think that's a great free one that you can actually get. Absolutely. If you're in non-blue decks and you're using Praetor's Grasp, uh, Pactive Negation is one that you don't have to spend any blue mana on, so it's easier to cast. Especially if you're looking for it to protect like a game-winning spell that you don't plan on paying the upkeep cost ever. It's the last turn, right? So we have Force of Will... Pact of Negation or, or Fierce, Fierce guardianship. guardianship. I think they're, they're kind of like right there. Yeah. Then f- Force of Negation. Then Mind Break Trap. And then Mental Misstep. And, and then, then Mental Misstep, min- I guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think men- is Mental Misstep better than Mind Break Trap? So I think it I is. So I play Mental Misstep in 100% of blue 100% decks. 100% of my decks. Yeah, yeah maybe it is. Yeah. yeah, so I would put Mental Misstep above Force of Negation even because I don't always play Force of Negation. Maybe I'm just wrong. I, I like Force of Negation better, but I mean, I'm, I'm so... Um, I'm so stuck in Kinnon mindset because yeah. I've played it for so long that I really... I mean, Force of Negation might be better because... I, I would cut Force of Negation sometimes. But even though you might cut it sometimes, like I, I, I think I think playing it 100, in 100% of decks is a, is good to get rid of like some of the lower levels. But like once we're getting to some of the more nitty-gritty kind of stuff here, I think now I kind of want to look at some more of the situations that Force of Negation can help me out with. And I think that can help me out with more problems than More flexible for sure. Right? It's a little bit more flexible. Definitely. It does everything that Mental Misstep does, but it can also do a little bit more at the cost of a blue card on yeah. not your turn. And that cost of a card, though, is that can be like super relevant. A lot of times your blue cards might be another counter spell that you're getting rid of. Which does suck. That's like the worst feeling, yeah. That one is. I agree. Yeah. Ceiling is far higher on yeah. Force of Negation, but Mental Misstep having such an impossibly low floor, I think, is so good. Like okay. at its very that would be worst, an impossible high floor. Impossibly, you are correct. An impossibly high floor. Okay, so for free counter magic, then in blue, it's Force, Force of Will, yep. Pact of Negation, right. or Fierce Guardianship. They're tied for second. Fourth place then is. Do we say mental misstep? Mental misstep. Followed by force of negation. Force of negation. Followed by. That's it. Uh, oh, uh, mind break trap. Mind, 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 break, mind break trap. Mind followed break by um, misdirection. Misdirection. Yeah. yeah. Follow. I think days is maybe above misdirection. Days and, is above misdirection. And I think days is below yeah. mind break trap. Also. Days is below mind break trap. Also. Yes. 
<laughs> yes. Remember the other day when like you I'm said getting... how sometimes you feel like you just copy what I'm saying? Yeah, right. When you go back and watch this footage, you can just like, that was I'm that. just the fucking parrot over here. Yeah. <laughs> That's how we hammer home play to win. Those concepts. are the important points. Yes, that exactly. we're hammering home. I repeat things for emphasis. We repeat things emphasis. for emphasis. Emphasis. <laughs> so hydroblast is on this list. No, it's fucking not. Get that off of the uh, list immediately. It's not CDH. It doesn't even what counter. It? No, it's it counters I, two I, spells. I wanted to hear you say that. <laughs> oh god. Oh hydroblast sucks. You've heard I it here first. That's my hot take. I hate hydroblast. But when we talked about one mana counter spells, we did not talk about red elemental blast or pyroblast. I would love to talk about why red elemental blast is better than pyroblast. Give here, it to me. Right? Yeah. Let because me hear when it. if it's getting misdirectioned or deflecting swatted, I want to make sure that it's still going to kill something instead of just whiff entirely. I, I guess technically it could be my thing. But in mono red, it can't be my thing. Yeah. So it would still have to hit something else. And a lot of times, if it if it can't hit something else, then it can't be deflecting swatted. Yep. Yeah, that is a, a relevant concern. So the other one, um, Pyroblast, is very occasionally better because it, you can do something like point it at a phantasmal image that isn't blue and have it sacrifice itself or you know any other number of reasons that you might need to cast it to increase storm count or something like that um, when there's no no target that it can actually hit um, but for the most part deflecting swat misdirection you're going to see that interaction a lot more often so as a corner case probably red elemental blast is better i like these two specifically because they're good at getting rid of mystic remora and rhystic study also true being able especially if you're in like a storm deck or if you're in like a food chain deck or a deck that is it loses to rhystic study as a stacks piece i am more eagerly looking to play these cards because they double as like very key interaction for things that stop you from winning the game so that, that's that's my big reason for wanting to play these two cards so where do we have these in the overall scheme of one mana counters then because a lot of decks this is also competing in space with fluster storm and spell pierce it depends on the decks i think some decks do not want to be playing as many red cards i think there are some five color decks that are really like soul tie decks that don't want as many red sources so aren't looking for red elemental blast and pyroblast but i think they're like as good as dispel maybe a little better I think I think they're better than Dispel. Dispel is almost always going to be countering another counter. There are yeah. pretty few instances other than, you know, like consultation or something that Ad it's nauseum. very important to counter. So yeah, I Ad would nauseum. definitely rate them higher, especially because they have the flexibility to kill Kinnon or, you know, get all, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, which is well, very Kinnon focused. Of course. <laughs> of course. Well, that's There's the only too, one like, deck that matters. It doesn't have to counter consultation because it counters the Thassa's Oracle, right? So like Very it helpful. still helps you out in that scenario too. Especially as like a non-blue card, giving non-blue decks a way to stop that combo in Red Elemental Blast Power Blast is super important. I find myself in three color blue decks that also include red. I normally will just play the one. I won't yeah. end up playing both because I, I would prefer more of the blue ones. I'm actively looking for more blue sources. I think more often than not playing just one is fine unless, like I said, your combo loses to Rhystic Study. I kind of advocate for playing both of them in those situations. Which makes sense, yeah. Um, there's also a couple of other uh, red ones. To Bolt's Trickery. This is great in non-blue decks. That's this is great in one. Decks, right? <laughs> I think any blue counterspell is better than Tabal's Trickery. But oh, hands down. Right, like any of the blue ones. None of the other blue ones give them another spell. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you see this when you're in an all-in deck that really has to defend its combo because it doesn't have the resilience to present multiple wins. Because I think otherwise you don't you don't really want this. It's not a super appealing counterspell to cast, um, especially at two mana, which is a lot for um, most of our interaction. Yep. So you'll see it sometimes. I feel good about it in mono red though. Like I oh, yeah. actively like feel great about having this as a way to get rid of something on the stack because they're not gonna f they're not gonna fall into the same thing that they need all the, the time. Yeah. In fact, very few of the time they'll fall into what they need. It's also really good with rule of law. If there's a rule of law out, then this counters the spell and they can't even cast the next thing. So it's just a hard counter spell. That Jane's is pretty good. Yeah, yeah, same Patrick, thing. Same. Yeah. yeah. Another one. Uh, this is exile and then you cast it. Or is it just cast? Well, Doesn't either, matter. Either, either way, it's not yeah, cast. Way, yeah, yeah, it's not going to cast. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It also has the significant upside of um, almost every time you cast it, you'll get to see a look of disgust on your opponent's face, which is That's just very true. No, because no one ever expects it, and they go, "I, I was sure you didn't have anything," and then you say, "Tybalt's trickery." <laughs> <laughs> it is great. Tricky, yeah. tricky. Ugh. 
Speaking of tricky, tricky, weird ones, should we talk about Imps Mischief? I like Imps Mischief. Yo, it's the only black counterspell we have on here. Dash Hopes is a black counterspell, technically. Is that an essence scatter, though? It's, it's creature no, spell? No, no. The, the downside is that it the spell is not countered if the opponent pays five life. Oh, okay. So it's not a counterspell. It fucking sucks. <laughs> I liked Imps Mischief a lot more before the printing of Deflecting Swat. Oh, once Deflecting Swat came out, which is, you know what, also a free counterspell. Yeah. Imps Mischief became nothing. Yeah, I think if you're in red-black decks, I think red has enough interaction that you don't want to waste your card on something like this. But if you're in, like, mono-black, I still think Imps Mischief is perfectly serviceable. I think it's he's playing Kyrick still, right? It, yeah, it probably does. Yeah, in those situations, too. But we didn't really talk about Deflecting Swat, but, like, Deflecting Swat is... One of the best free counters up there, oh, up yeah. there too. We should probably put that on our list. I think that one's better than Fierce Guardianship. It 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 can be. Yeah. It can be. Uh, because what it does to spells on the stack is absolutely chaotic and wild. Being able to stop uncounterable things is really good. Being able to swing uh, interaction to work in your favor to like gain you card advantage in a way is like really powerful. Like if someone tries to kill your thing and you can swat it to somebody else's thing, you got rid of one interaction and somebody else's thing for your one card. That's really good. Especially on things like Abrupt Decay, like you mentioned, it's not it's uncounterable, but you can still get around it that way. Perfect example. I do think it's absolutely a great card, but I do not put it higher than Fierce Guardianship. And my main rationale is that it doesn't counter Underworld Breach and it doesn't counter any piece of Thassa's Oracle combo. And those you are can't play it in those Kinnon. are pretty relevant. Yeah, you can't play it in Kinnon. You also you can't play it in Kinnon, which makes big it garbage. Absolute shit. Yeah, I agree with you. Those are very valid points. Um I the so should we say the ceiling on deflecting SWAT is a little bit Higher, but the floor is a little bit lower. Yeah, yeah that right? sounds exactly right. That's it can, exactly it can what do it a is. lot, yeah. or it can kind of do not what you need at all, which sucks. Whereas Fierce Guardianship almost always does like what you need. Yep. Yeah, I would definitely agree with it there. There's a couple of other non-blue counter spells too. Autumn's Veil and Veil of Summer don't say counter spell on them, but they counter blue and black spells that target your things or try to counter your things. Essentially, yes, they cause them to fizzle, um, which is relevant because. If it's, uh, I don't know, if someone's playing like a really weird blue counter spell, like there's a couple that say can't be countered, like say Dovin's Veto, for example, um, it will still succeed in causing those not to happen because your your things can't be countered rather than it actually counters the spell. So some edge cases there, but that also means that um, like mind, mind Break Trap will still work through a Veil of Summer. So a little yeah. bit of weird trade off, a couple edge cases. I think Veil of Summer is one of the best green cards in CDH. I think it is an auto-include in every green deck. Oh, hands down. It is fantastic. I think that drawing a card and being able to effectively counter a spell, that's like Cryptic Command, counter spell, draw a card, and Cryptic Command is a four-mana spell. I know it's not the same, but um, Veil of Summer I think is incredible. Autumn's Veil, however, I kind of rate Autumn's Veil in a similar category to Tabalt's Trickery, where I think it's worse than all of the blue counter spells. But if you're in non-blue, Autumn's Veil can be a great option. It's a good option that you have, too. Now, again, for me, Veil of Summer can also sometimes fight with some of the other blue counter spells that I'm playing, too. Definitely. I put it in that uh, Swan Song category, the one-minute category. That's how I categorize As this do card. I, which is weird because it can't stop in Ad Nauseam. That's like, true. it can't stop in Underworld Breach. So, like, it doesn't stop other people's win conditions. It only helps you win. I mean, That's it true. does if you're using it to defend your counter spell. That's kind of why it can sometimes do that That's thing. a good point. Yeah, you which is, just flip your mindset and then bing, bang, boom. As long as you have another counter spell on the stack, Veil of yeah. Summer absolutely can help you counter an ad nausea. That's a great point. Yeah. The one the one other thing I want to say about um, both of these cards, though, especially Veil of Summer because it's better, is that um, these can be pseudo Ranger Captain of Eos. Like, there are, there are great times when you want to cast this in your upkeep on what you think is a winning turn to draw out interaction because if it resolves it just says your stuff is not going to be countered unless it's that. a pyroblast or something like 100%. that. So when you're using it as a silence, you're immediately going to bait counter magic. And often, you know, based on priority order and looking at your opponents, you will get a read on the entire table's interaction just by casting the spell in your upkeep and know whether to go for it that turn or not. Yeah. Speaking of silence, silence is kind of like a counter spell that isn't really on our list, but it's sort of in this category, right? Right. I think for us, um, we typically draw the line with counter spells at things that are interacting on the stack and stopping spells from resolving. So that's something that Veil of Summer can do in a way that you can use it. But cards that really do only that aren't really counter spells. They're they're more like instants that are 
temporary stacks pieces for the turn. Silence can't really, it responds to any reaction. I mean, like, it, it, it you can, it's an instant, it can respond, but it doesn't do anything to anything that's already on the stack. No. So that's why it's kind of not really a counter spell because it doesn't affect what's already on the stack. It will let everything happen, but then stop everything after right. it. But yeah, I agree. It, it, an incredible card, Silence nonetheless, is a staple of places he's playing every white deck without a doubt, but it's not really a counter spell, just in like the ballpark. Yep. Uh, I want to talk about Mana Drain. Sure. I, I think people don't respect Mana Drain enough. You think it's just even more play? Mana Drain is so good. Like, if you play Crown, it just gets you to your Crown. And Why more, would you yeah. not play it? Even like, better, it's, like, great with Ad Nauseam. It's I mean, awesome with Ad Nauseam, right? Like, there's so many times where, like, it lets you cast Ad Nauseam, and sometimes if you well, if you stop someone else's Ad Nauseam with it, you can also have extra mana up to cast, like, a Talisman and help progress you after your ad nauseous. Yeah, I think the problem is, especially with two blue, this is something where you sort of have to really commit to leaving mana open to cast it. And so um, y it is much better in decks that already want to leave mana up for other reasons. True. Of course, I'm thinking of Kinnon, but um, but th that's not the only deck. You know, if you have um, activations between turns, Thrasios decks, that sort of thing, it's really good. But the problem is, if you're not in that position where you have other things to do with that mana, you're often going to find yourself looking for something to mana drain and maybe countering the wrong thing when you should have held that interaction because you've more or less mentally committed to casting it on a particular turn cycle. I well, agree. Part of the other reason why I like it, though, too, is that it is a creature counter as well. And a lot of the decks oh, yeah. that, you know, you end up playing will only have two other creature counters in Force of Will and Pact of Negation. And, like, that's it. So being able to stop creatures, I think, is massive. There's a ton of win conditions that are creatures now that you, you have to be totally prepared for, so... Yeah, I agree that it being able to stop creature spells is huge, but the tempo loss of, like you said, holding it up and not casting it or having to cast it on something that you don't think is a great target, it can, like, lose you the game almost. Like, the CDH is so... The early turns of the game are so important. If you, like, time walk yourself by not furthering your board to hold up your mana drain and nobody casts anything relevant and you don't get to do anything with it, if you waste your whole turn doing nothing, well, yeah. that can, like, almost certainly, like, lose you the game. It's a, it's a learning curve because, like, I, I situationally, you know, you do want to hold up your mana drain, but I, I feel like if you know that you're in a point in the game where there's not going to be that big meaningful impactful thing yeah you, you don't have to just hold it up just because you have it in your hand right and that's part of the flexibility of it i think yeah. it's like it's flexible in that it can counter a lot of things but it's inflexible in that it's not convenient for you to cast it all the time no and you can also pitch it to force of will so <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> that's very true no and, and, and maybe this is just because i've been re-loving thrasios decks a lot and i've been playing a lot more better in thrasios decks for sure yeah so maybe it just it helps fit my play style a little bit more but i actually really liked it in jessica ishai because people dealt with Ishai and then Ishai becomes very expensive and then when when you just incidentally mana drain something and then on your turn Ishai is only two mana like it was it, it just very helpful and it was like a good I guess utility counter spell is the way to put it the mana is no joke I would also say that that makes it um, a counter spell that is much better aggressively than defensively because if you're casting this to try and defend a game-winning play, then you're likely not ever going to see that mana. You're not going to get that benefit. Whereas if you're casting it on an opponent's turn to shut down something they're doing, then you're much more likely to actually benefit from the mana. 100% agree. Great at stopping your opponent's shit, not as good as protecting your shit. Yeah. Actually, pretty bad at protecting your shit. Arguably, like almost the same as counterspell when protecting your yeah, shit pretty because much because when you're right like you said like you just never get to see the mana if it actually works well the problem is then if you're trying to win on your first main phase you go to your second main phase and then your mana drain mana you kicks better in. have something to do with it right, yeah. right? Yeah. so you, you kind of yeah so it usually using on someone else's turn is, is how you want to go muddle the mixture is really the only other two mana counterspell that we haven't talked about I like this one because I think of this one as a tutor, actually. I think this one as a tutor first that also is like a counter spell, which yeah. is which is kind of unique. And the fact that it is an uncounterable non-spell tutor, that is super important. That is, too. Yeah. So the, the decks that I'm looking for Muddle the Mixture are non-black decks that have two drops that I want to search for. Um, and that's that's pretty much it because like the, the counter spell i'm already in blue so every other counter spell is better this is just situationally going to be good on the stack when i need it to yep occasionally you use it for the counter i think more often you use it for the tutor and this is certainly um dramatic scepter's best friend yeah it is 100%. tutors either have that combo i love this card with red decks finding underworld breach or dockside extortionist yeah. allows you to get something that if you're in a losing position or if you're in a winning position so i think that makes this card super versatile um, but i agree with you that if it's if you're in black that there's a probably enough 
black tutors that you maybe don't get this, which is unfortunate because in Grixis, this is a great tutor because it finds Stasis Oracle and Underworld Breach. So it would be playable in Grixis, but you just have so many options. That's really up to like player um, preference. If you want something like this, like as a counterspell, this is bad. As a tutor, this is expensive, but the versatility to do both is really good. That's what makes it good. And honestly, it gets tainted pack too. So it really does get yeah. both halves of that, of that combo too. Yeah. Um, I said that that was like one of the only other two minute counter spells that we haven't talked about. That's not it. What else you got? Unsubstantiate is one we throw I like on unsubstantiate late. sometimes. That's one that I've run here and there, and it 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 rarely makes the cut. But um, because it is both a bounce spell and sort of a counter spell in the same way, remand is a counter spell where you're not you're not putting it in the graveyard or in exile, but you are getting it off the stack. Um, that flexibility is pretty valuable because you like both of those effects. At two, you're not thrilled about paying two for either, but when you can do both. Um, well, when you can do whichever one you need in the moment, that's fantastic. I like these in slower control lists, specifically Kess. I like being able to bounce a spell in the end step and then on my turn use Kess to use its ability to bounce a permanent and kind of make it as an easy two for one that can hit a variety of things. I like that it gets around uncounterable spells like Abrupt Decay and Hallbreaker Horror. Yeah, it, only tentatively, only on a tempo thing because they can just recast it again because it just puts it right back in their hand. But, but this, yes, this card is the epitome that. of I'm trying to win the game right now. Yeah. Because it, it bounces the thing. Yeah, you'll get it back. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to win right now. So as long as you can't get it back immediately, we're good. Yeah, pretty pretty bad in a counter war, I would say, because they just get the counter spell back and can recast it again more often than not. Good for permanence on the stack. Yeah, definitely. Or in play. Um, do we want to talk about, like, Tails End and Stifle? I think those are two that we really don't think make the cut. Um, but they're worth mentioning because a lot of times people sort of are asking why don't Stifle effects get played. And there's a reasonable case for them getting played. Like there are a lot of really important enters the battlefield effects, um, Dockside and Thassa's Oracle being the most obvious. And the issue with them um, is that they're just too narrow. Um, if, if you can only counter those two things, even though those are very important things, you can also just counter those things while they're on the stack with most of these other counter spells, and so they just don't make the cut. The reason why counter spells are good, we've talked about many reasons, but in my opinion, the main reason why just the mechanic of counter spells is good is because of the versatility. It can do a lot of different things, and if you're not getting that out of your counter spell, if your stifle is really, really specific, then it loses its power of being a counter spell. Like stifle can stop a Thassa's Oracle trigger, but any of these counter spells can also probably stop either the demonic consultation or some other spell that got Thassa's Oracle to where it is. Or the Thassa's Oracle. Right. Like, if Stifle was in another color, if Stifle was, like, a white card or a red card, it would probably see a little bit more play. But just as a blue card, all, I put it below all of those these counter spells that we've already talked about. And at that point, you, there's just no more room. Agreed. It, Stifle is too situational. Tails End is too expensive for being too limited. Yeah. I don't really like either of them. At two mana, I need the card to be... Un, uh, it needs to counter anything, I think. It needs to be more like a Dovin's Veto. Like, if I'm going to yeah. pay two mana for it, like... It has to have a huge upside. Right, yeah. Like, you mean, being uncounterable in Dovin's Veto, it's the only multicolor counter spell we're going to talk about. Well, and I think the nail in the coffin is that anytime you want Stifle or Tail's End, almost, almost every situation in which you want those, you can cast Dress Down and it will be better yep. than either of those. Yeah, that's true. There's just plenty of other options that do more specific, more good things. Stifle was good in Legacy because stopping a fetch land in 1v1 is catastrophic. It, it, I don't know if catastrophic is the right word, but it's a really good tempo play, whereas like that added option is not in our format, so Stifle becomes much worse. We didn't talk about Wash Away. I don't even uh, that know shouldn't what that even card be on the list. Does. See, I I don't like Wash Away at all. No, I don't either. And how much should we talk about Spell Snare? We're not talking about Spell Snare. The card sucks. I don't like Spell Snare either. So I just remove I, them, and then every time that we said a number earlier, it was just going to be <laughs> way the fuck off. Way off. I think Spell Snare is right around where Minor Misstep is, about that level of playability, which is not, I think, is not. No, I mean, yeah, you can list off a lot of powerful spells at well, literally any CMC. Right. But the the chances of them being on the stack at the same time that you have this card in your hand when you need it to be aren't always the percentages that you want it to be. So I think you look at this card and be and you're disappointed more than anything else. I agree. Counter spells are sweet. Counter spells are really cool. It's part of the reason why I like CEDH is because it allows you to be able to play on the stack 
so much. Yeah. Yeah, that's part of what makes the format so fun is the amount of interaction that gets run and counterspell is premium interaction for sure. I have a question. Give me a counterspell in another color that that is a is a one mana counterspell in another color that's good in CDH. Like create one. Like a what is a black one mana counterspell look Ooh, like? Good Something question. equivalent to a swan song in black. I, I think so one mana you're saying? Yeah, one mana, what does the effect have to be in order for it to be playable in you black. would lose a ton of life is that what it is yeah, yeah. i think i think it's um one mana counter target non-black spell you lose five life mm, yeah non -black. You, okay. and you know what you probably have to sacrifice a creature too okay maybe 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 it's like four mana and then but it can, if you sacrifice a creature it's one mana like all those other effects oh yeah i kind of like that too yeah what about for another what about like for a red one for a red it would, I mean, it, it would be pyroblast. It would be pyroblast. <laughs> oh, kind of. The, yeah. the green one would be veil of summer. The white one is silence, and there, we we just made the black one. Well, the white one would have to be. You know, the argument could be made that white could have counter spells. There are two white counter spells actually. There is right. manative, which, which is not good for spike, and I love. And there's a three mana memory lapse in white too. Yes, you're missing my favorite white counter spell. Oh, actually. which one? Rebuff the wicked. Oh, what does this one do? This is a one mana white counter spell that says counter target spell that targets you or a permanent you control. Oh, it's not bad. It's not no, bad. It's not it's, bad. It's either. not bad in white we, stuff to I, protect your things. I personally am under the opinion that I think white should have uh, mana leak type effects. Mana leak, spell pierce, miscast. I think that should be a white thing. I think I that's Texas. Yeah. I think that's how white should counter spells. That would completely change the whole color pie in the format. But in my opinion, I think Mana Leak could be a white card, and I think that would be awesome. I think a white card that was one mana, counter target spell unless its opponent pays three, is good. I think that's what we should have. <laughs> Maybe two. Yeah, that's Maybe great, counter, obviously. Let's just yeah, let's just they should talking. print that. Yeah. I want a one mana card that says, I win the game when I, I cast won. it. No, that's too powerful. Yeah, that costs two mana. <laughs> second. Yes, okay, now that now we're talking. Thank you so much for watching or listening. You can support us directly on Patreon like our $100 patrons. Demon of Razgriz and Baby G-Bus. If you want to pick up any merch, you can go to playtowinmtg.com. If you want to check out any of our other content, you can do that at Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Goodbye. Should we talk about our, should we thank our $50 patrons? Let's go through it. Justin. Eli Richty. Jason Perkins. Man Solo. Nikola Marikovic. Steven Schlichty. That Green Guy. Plantain Jackson. Isaiah Verlisky. Michael Lyon. Pedro. Byron Wang. Wind Wave. C. Kwaja A. Hamid. Jacob Dab. CZ. Michael Ballou. Jan Wildfang. Sleepy Jarvis. Thomas Buono. Swampy McGee. Lauren Connell, David Nelson, Vinny Bianca, Dromax, James Noon, and Moxfield. That one was really that good. Was great. <laughs> Holy shit. Fifty black slick. Damn it. Yeah, that's how this is. 50 black slick back hair wigs. 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 Black slick back hair wigs.